A report on women's health. January 1991, Gynalotrimin freed women of needing a prescription to cure recurrent vaginal yeast infections. In the time I took to get a prescription, with Gynalotrimin, my cure has begun. Gynecologists have prescribed Gynalotrimin to cure millions of women. It's available full prescription strength for early treatment, early cure, and that's healthier. Gynalotrimin is important news for women's health. Gynalotrimin. It brings you early treatment, early cure. I'm on my way. Boise? When your travel plans suddenly change... You gotta help me. I checked my case to Boston, now they want me in Boise. It's good to know Delta's got a team like Cumbus... Walt, I need a recheck fast. ...to Price... Large sample case? ...to Morris... Back number, all four, seven, ...to nine. Elders. I got it! Great job, Walt. No problem, Mr. DePrima. Thanks. Mr. DePrima, Mr. Michael DePrima, please call your office. Uh, Walt? About that bag. Now Mrs. Dash introduces garlic and herb for healthier flavor instead of salt. Your heart will thank you. Mom, I just wanted to be what you and Dad have. You have such a special relationship. I met someone over here. No one helps you share the feelings like AT&T Long Distance. He said when I leave him, it... When you leave me, it makes me feel... AT&T. All you need to reach out. Diet Mode. Break the mold. Taste the cold of Diet 7-Up. It's a few degrees away from the everyday. Diet 7-Up with NutraSweet. Break the ice. It's the day after time when reality begins to set in. Coming up on Eyewitness News tonight, reporter Jan Thornburg takes us into the fire zone. What's next for those who lost everything? Plus, a special day for local soldiers on this Memorial Day weekend. I'm Alex Stroud. And I'm Mike Monsoor. Eyewitness News is next. This is Charles Gibson. And Joan London. Tomorrow, a Memorial Day tribute to casualties of the Gulf War. Plus, from Hudson Hawk, Danny Aiello. Then later in the week, tips to avoid wedding ripoffs on Good Morning America. Watch the Weekend Report tonight on most of these ABC stations. America's watching ABC. Your combine is a big investment. Choose the best, a twin rotor from Ford New Holland. With Terrain Tracer, you harvest the whole crop. The optional float lets you get close to the ground under any circumstances. Reverse the direction of your feeder and auger with a touch of a button. It makes unplugging your machine simple. The electronic stone trap automatically ejects rocks, avoiding costly breakdown. For more on the twin rotor combine, see your Ford New Holland dealer today. Unclaimed Freight Carpet One wants your business. They're going out to get it with 350 rolls of carpet and 80 rolls of vinyl always in stock. Full House discounts the lowest prices guaranteed on in-stock carpet. Unclaimed Freight Carpet One will even meet or beat the competition's price. Bring in your room measurements and they'll give you the total cost on the spot. And there's more. Unclaimed Freight Carpet One offers 60 days same as cash with free financing for 60 days. Unclaimed Freight Carpet One wants to give you the best, the best quality and the best service. Just two miles west of I-29 on 12th Street in Sioux Falls. You're watching the Eyewitness News Network. When you need to know more, there's more reason to watch Eyewitness News tonight. Good evening. Thanks for joining us tonight. It has been nearly two days now, and the historic Hanson Building in downtown Sioux Falls continues to smolder. The firefighters have been on the scene all day and will remain all night looking for hot spots. Eyewitness News reporter uh, Jan Thornburg spent the day downtown with fire officials and fills us in on the latest details. A fire watch continues downtown, even though the destructive blaze has been out for well over a day now. Four firefighters remain on duty, two with an aerial truck behind the Chart Hansen building and two in front along with a pumper truck, just in case. They're looking for hot spots, flames which could reignite the building. Several hot spots did flare up throughout the day in the front and back of the building, and firefighters quickly took action. The corner of Phillips Avenue and 11th Street remains a danger zone. Fire officials fear the worst. The ruins of the Hanson building could tumble down. 
There's always the possibility after a fire of a structural collapse, and that's our main concern right now, and that's why we have barricade tape up and uh, police officers on the scene to ensure that the general public is uh, safe. Officials spent the day walking through the fire zone, amazed more of it didn't go up in flames. The fire inched right up to the state theater, but it was spared thanks to an old architectural design. If it weren't for that, that double uh, party wall there, that double thickness, it would, it would be real close. On the other side of the wall, the picture is completely different. Fire investigators began their difficult task of searching through all of this rubble to determine exactly what caused the blaze. The men are tracking the fire from the least burned section to the worst, trying to determine where it began. Eyeballing the structure, walking through it, and taking photographs. It's all part of the lengthy process, and it's made more difficult with three collapsed floors mangled together. It's layered. We have uh, the roofing materials and so forth on top. Uh, it's probably going to be necessary to get a lot of that removed so that we can see what's uh, below that to... Uh, actually look at some of the burn patterns and, and other things that will give us some clues as to what uh, how the fire traveled through the building. Officials expect their investigation will take at least a week and during that time firefighters will remain on hand protecting what's left of the building from any more hot spots. Jan Thornburg, Eyewitness News, Sioux Falls. Now it's still unknown what's going to happen to the destroyed Hansen building. Rick Hansen and his brother and cousin have owned the 87-year-old building since 1977. Yesterday, they watched it burn to the ground. Now, they're not sure whether it will remain standing or if it will be leveled. We're trying to get together and meet with uh, people who know what to do in situations like this. We're, uh, we're not uh, structural engineers. We're not expert enough to know whether or not the building can be salvaged or if it's practical or even possible. So we need advice, and we're going to seek the best advice we can get. The Hansons have been renovating the building over the past several years. While the ruins of their shops and offices continue to smolder, business owners are counting their losses and looking toward the future. Eyewitness News talked with some of those owners today. Joslyn Hansen has spent 10 years bringing some of the finest South Dakota artwork into her Phillips Avenue gallery. Now she's bringing it out in bits and pieces. Yeah, I know it's going to be uh, you know, a real shock to the artists because they put their heart and soul into their work. It's their livelihood just as this is my livelihood. And, uh, and it's going to be real hard for them. Even if they were to replace the artwork, it's, it's going to take a long time to do that. Hansen puts her losses in the hundreds of thousands of dollars, most of it in original artwork. But she's still one of the lucky. More than a dozen others who own businesses here have nothing to salvage. And what there is, they still can't get to, making it that much tougher to get going again. All our client files, like we're under federal confidentiality guidelines, so in order for us to communicate with anyone else about a person's case, we have to have releases. An inconvenience, but not a hindrance for the building's biggest tenant, the Carroll Institute. It and the other service agencies in the building are carrying on business, if not exactly business as usual. There don't seem to be guidelines, you just do it. <laughs> All the staff is alive. <laughs> We have somebody to answer the phone, we have our appointment books, so I think we'll be able to go on. It'll be a little chaotic. But the chaos is a small price to pay for those determined to get their businesses back on their feet. The Carroll Institute, Family Services, and the Volunteer and Information Center are all answering their emergency phone lines, and they are seeing clients. If you have an appointment with any of those agencies, you are asked to call and reschedule. If you plan to be on the road tomorrow, rest assured you won't be alone. As the first official holiday of the summer, Memorial Day typically invites travelers to take to the roadways in droves. State Highway Patrol says we've been lucky so far this weekend. There have been no major accidents. To make sure things stay that way through the holiday, they're beefing up their presence on the highways. For the weekend, uh, the manpower has increased. We're out to about 90% full strength from Friday at 6 o'clock until uh, Monday at midnight. The number of DWI arrests are usually up on Memorial Day since the traffic is so heavy. Tomorrow night will be the busiest time to be driving as folks head home to start the work week. On Memorial Day is the time we set aside to remember those who fought and died for our country. Today, all across the country, people visited cemeteries honoring our fallen war heroes. In Sioux Falls, wreaths marked the graves of local war veterans. Also in remembrance, most government and city offices are closed. A Sioux Falls family is counting its blessings this Memorial Day weekend. Wally Doppenberg returned from the Persian Gulf just two weeks ago. 
he's spending this weekend just enjoying time with his family. He says being part of Desert Storm has changed the way he thinks about Memorial Day. After coming back from the Persian Gulf, it gives a whole new light on what Memorial Day really means. Um, you watch soldiers uh, fight in a conflict, you watch soldiers die. Um, it means a lot more to me this year than it's ever meant to me in my life. Having her husband in the Gulf for four months gives Melanie Doppenberg a new perspective on the holiday, too. We were watching a parade on TV, and I started thinking about Memorial Day being yesterday. It was a parade, a homecoming parade, and, and the tears still roll, and every time I think about that and what Memorial Day is tomorrow is, you know, in honor of soldiers that have died in, in wars, and, and it could have happened. The Doppenbergs both say they're very thankful as they reflect on the meaning of this holiday. One group of South Dakota soldiers spent the weekend on American soil, but not at home. But that will change this week. Thirteen members of the 57th Transportation Detachment from Brookings returned to the U.S. on Saturday. After outcrossing this weekend, they are expected to return to Brookings tomorrow. The group was the first South Dakota Guard unit called up for Operation Desert Storm. They left South Dakota on September 17th. Rescuers are searching tonight for a possible drowning victim at Lewis and Clark Lake near Yankton. According to witnesses, a man fell from the west side of Gavin's Point Dam. Searchers have been dragging the lake since 10 this morning, and they will continue that search tomorrow morning. Police have confirmed that a person is missing, but they aren't releasing the name. It is believed the man is from Omaha, Nebraska. Still to come on Eyewitness News tonight, the Windy City turned wet. A mess folks there trying to clean up. Plus, all it takes is a snip here and a clip there to make a difference. Later on Picture This. I work out. A lot. But I also do something just as important. I sleep on a King Coil Posture Bond mattress with heavier springs in the center third for extra support. Where he needs it the most. It's endorsed by the International Chiropractors Association. And by a sleepy wife. Without my King Coil mattress, I'd spend a third of my life out of shape. See Unclaimed Freight Furniture or Southgate Farmer's Market, Sioux Falls. Automobile accidents happen every day, and if you're involved in an accident, your safety is of the utmost importance. Today's cars are designed so that the vehicle, not the passenger, takes the force of impact. The technicians at Pierre's are trained to repair your car to its pre-accident condition so that you can be protected should you have another accident. At Pierre's, we're concerned with safety, your safety. Here's another econo fact. We know you compare prices with the competitors, and that's okay. Because while other stores price their products to see how much they can get for them, Econo Foods buys products to see how low we can price them. Real savings at Econo Foods. An econo fact you should know. At Econo Foods, you'll find our first aisle packed with products we bought at special low prices. Putting some of our best bargains in one aisle makes finding the greatest savings even easier. Real savings at Econo Foods. If you see news happening, call the Eyewitness Newsline, 336-9999. The Earth moved in California. A small earthquake rattled the Los Angeles area. That quake centered near Inglewood. Residents say some homes moved off their foundations, but the damage reports are minor. No one was injured in that earthquake. Uh, authorities in Iowa are evaluating flood damage in the north-central part of the state. About six and a half inches of rain fell in less than three hours last night. Much of the community of Wesley is underwater. About 20 people had to be evacuated from their homes. Much of the Windy City is wet, real wet. Many areas are underwater following overnight heavy rains and several tornadoes. The hardest hit area, northeastern Illinois. Visitors spent most of the day salvaging what they could from their homes and businesses. Forecasters are predicting more bad weather. The future of Pan Am World Airways is all but optimistic. That according to Transportation Secretary Samuel Skinner. Skinner told reporters today that he is not overly optimistic that the airlines will be able to outlive its financial troubles. He said he's hoping that it will be taken over by another airline. A jetliner over Thailand exploded and crashed into a hillside. Today, 200 were on board that jetliner flying from Bangkok to Vienna, Austria. It, it let last word, eight bodies had been recovered. A possible end to a 30-year civil war is only a day away. That tops our Eyewitness News headlines tonight. Ethiopian rebel leaders have gathered in London for peace talks aimed at ending the war. 
However, many Ethiopians aren't sticking around to see what happens. Thousands have fled the country because of intense fighting. Another day of collusion trials has ended in Kuwait, with justice giving 17 suspects and their lawyers more time to prepare their cases. The trial is expected to pick up again on Tuesday. The Soviet space capsule carrying Britain's first astronaut safely landed in Soviet Central Asia. Two cosmonauts were also aboard. Their president is spending the Memorial Day weekend at his main vacation home, resting and rebuilding his strength for a bout with thyroid trouble. He's following doctor's orders not to but he's been playing golf and doing some fishing. Coming up next, it is anybody's guess. Right now, the odds are on some rain. And later on, a pooch salon. Picture this after your forecast. Watch carefully. What you are about to see is fast, very fast. Let's see that again. When the Pennzoil Special is racing at 230 miles per hour at Indy, its engine needs all the protection it can get. <laughs> 